leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. You have up to 90 minutes, should you wish to use it. I won't use 90 minutes, Mr. Speaker. I know a sigh of relief from the room. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate the member from Edmonton Centre for bringing forward Bill 202, which I was prepared to support. And I think it's very unfortunate that we didn't get an opportunity to be able to debate that bill because of a procedural maneuver, which I think doesn't respect the, the rights of all of the members in this chamber to be able to bring forward private members' business. I think that uh, you can well imagine the discussions that took place in our caucus over the last week or two as we were debating this bill. But I think that the member from Airdrie helped to come to a, a reasonable compromise that balanced all of the rights that were, are under consideration here, the rights of L LGBTQ students to feel safe and accepted, equality rights, the rights of parents, as well as the rights of school boards, in particular uh, religious school boards, faith-based schools, to be able to ensure that everybody's rights are protected. I was looking forward to that debate. I was looking forward to those amendments. I've talked to the member from Edmonton Centre. I know that she didn't support all of them, but I think that we gave an honest effort to try to preserve the essential elements of what it is she was trying to do while still respecting that we needed to come to a conclusion on how we could better protect parental rights and religious freedom. The three main ways in which we would have approached that would be to have removed sexual orientation from the clause in 11.1. Um, supporting that, affirming as well that homeschool families and faith-based educators would, would not be forced to teach something that was contrary to their beliefs. Again, I think it would have been a reasonable amendment. And uh, importantly, if a school, a faith-based school or a Catholic board said no to a GSA, that they had to provide some kind of counseling or support to the student in, quen in question. To me, that's absolutely essential to any bill that I can support, and it's the reason why I'll be voting against Bill 10. I don't think it preserves what the original intention of um, the member from Edmonton Centre was attempting to do. There has been some comments made about Catholic schools and Catholic school boards, and I had the great privilege of going back and forth between Catholic schools and public schools when I was in the, the education system. It was a great value to me, and I, I think I characterize the Catholic concerns a little bit differently than the member from Buffalo. I think that uh, the Pope himself, and I like this Pope, I think he's having the same debate and discussion within his own hierarchy about how to be able to uh, welcome members from the LGBTQ community and still be able to live within the tenets of the Catholic faith. And I'm watching that with great interest, having been very close to uh, the Catholic teachings over the course of, of my life. But I think we do have to respect that it is up to the Catholic school board and the Catholic schools to be able to find that balance of how to be able to reconcile those. And we can't dictate to them. The, as for Bill 10, there are some things that I do support about Bill 10. Putting sexual orientation into the Bill of Rights, again, this has already been determined by the courts. It's already in our Alberta Human Rights Act. Having it in the Bill of Rights makes sense. Parental rights also being enshrined in the Bill of Rights, an excellent move for the reasons that the member from Airdrie had said. We have a great stain on our history as a province in our country with the residential school system and the violation of parents' rights where the state felt that they knew better than parents. And I think that uh, we make a grave error in not recognizing how important parental rights are in determining the, the education for a child. Also moving this section to the School Act, I'm supportive of as well. But where I, where I don't support the bill is in the, the treatment of the issue of a student asking for a GSA club. And I agree with the members from Buffalo and from Edmonton Centre that it, it doesn't do anything to advance where children find themselves today. And I'll give a few stories to, um, to illustrate why I prefer the approach taken in Bill 202 as opposed to the approach taken in Bill 10. First of all, going to uh, Stony Plain a few nights ago, I met Rachel, a transgendered woman, who actually supported the approach that we were taking with modifying Bill 202 with the amendments that we had proposed. She felt that that actually did get the right balance and would have satisfied uh, her concerns. And so I thought that that was um, 
that was important to know that not every member of the LGBTQ community thinks everything has to be dealt with in exactly the same way. So I think that there are members of, uh, of every community who believes that this balance is important. Secondly, of course, the Foothill School Division, which overlaps the area that I represent, they already have two uh, gay street alliances in their schools, one in Okotoks and one in Turner Valley. So we've seen already that in the community that I represent, that this is something that our school boards have taken a proactive approach on, and I'm grateful for that. The, uh, the third story is I had a constituent who called me because her transgendered son had wanted to start up a gay-straight alliance in the school that he was in, in Claire's home, and was told no. And that was just it. It was no. It was not no, but here's what we can do instead. It's not no, but here's another school that you can go to. The answer was just no. And that has stayed with me for a year since I've been wondering what happened to that child uh, and being shut down by the adults in that school when he was clearly trying to reach out to find a, find a support group. The fact that there was no answer for him and his mother was calling me to see what I could do. And I, I, uh, I contacted Chris Wells, who is a member uh, who, is, who teaches at the University of Alberta for the sexual minorities um, uh, uh, area to get some advice from him. It was the first time that I came into contact with him and the group and the work that he's trying to do. Um, I've since been able to visit GSA clubs and talk to the kids who benefit from them. And it's, it's moved me greatly, which is part of the reason why I, I support the approach that, that was being taken by the member from Edmonton Centre. One of the issues that I think is important for us to, stand, to understand, and I'm, I mean this is no offence, I'm trying to speak in a way that's uh, accepting of everybody's diverse viewpoints in here, and I know that everybody does have, have strong passions about it. But in speaking with a Catholic school trustee, uh, at the ASBA breakfast uh, a little while ago as they were trying to grapple with how to deal with this issue of how do you accommodate gay students within a Catholic environment. They did a series of round tables with students at high schools because I think that the adults were looking at this as just an issue of bullying. And so they wanted to understand the bullying aspect of it. And what the kids told them is we're accepted by our peers, it's the adults who don't accept. And that, I think, is why we have to really understand. At what point does a mature youth have the ability to make their own decisions about their sexuality that doesn't involve their parents? At the age of 12, a child, if they've got a split home, can choose to live with mom or dad. So we recognize that a child as young as 12 can choose which parent they want to live with. At age 14, they can choose to have sex, as long as it's within somebody who's uh, within a close age to them and not somebody who's in a, a position of authority over them. At age 16, they can become emancipated from their parents and make entire education decisions on their own. So there is, with these children, somewhere in the age of sexual maturity, somewhere above the age of 14 when they're in high school, where they really have the ability and right to be able to make their own decisions about the kind of support that they feel that they need to feel accepted. And that, to me, is what GSA clubs are about. The, the children that I met with who were at these JSA clubs, most of them, their parents didn't know that they were out yet. Most of them um, knew that if their parents knew that there'd be some consequences to that. One uh, individual I spoke with, she said that two lesbian girls had come out at her school and had been kicked out of the school. Another young boy told me that he came out to his parents and his dad rejected him. going to pause for a moment while we get a door closed up there. Um, Sergeants, if you could close that door, please, we can hear uh, some interruptions coming from there. Sorry to interrupt you, Honourable Member, but uh, please proceed. Another young woman was, <clears throat> was beaten by her father.
So wh while I respect that we need to find a balance <clears throat> with parental rights and with religious freedom, I think we need to also respect that in the case of these mature youths, this really is a case of life or death for some of them. We really do have a number of youths who have nowhere else to go if they're not accepted by their community, not accepted in their home environment. And it's a very cute, confusing time to go through puberty at the best of times. These kinds of clubs are providing an opportunity for these students, not just to feel safe from bullying, which is important, not just to be able to provide an avenue to be able to educate their peers, but also to make sure that they can deal with the confusing thoughts that come along with what it is that they're dealing with, which is compounded by everything that kids these age are going through. Now, to, to say that these students who are going through this, who are already facing these extreme emotions, in some cases, these kids are cutting themselves, they're attempting suicide, in some cases they are actually succeeding in committing suicide. To take these kids and say that the solution, when their teacher says no, is to go before a school board and try to argue their case, or go before a lawyer in a court and try to get a judicial decision for them to be able to set up one of these clubs, that's not reasonable, Mr. Speaker. That's not the balance that we were looking for in this bill. I think that Bill 202 found that correct balance. I'm very hopeful that when the members are considering this bill and considering potential amendments to it, and unfortunately we don't have a lot of time to bring amendments to it, but I do hope that they will bring forward and support an amendment that doesn't give a school board the right to just say no when a child comes before them. Support an amendment that will create an opportunity for these kids to have some other avenue to be able to feel supported, to feel accepted, and to deal with the issues that they're dealing with. I'm afraid that Bill 10 falls well short, well short, of what the member from Edmonton Centre was trying to accomplish. And I would hope that if it cannot be properly amended to be able to accommodate that, that it would be voted down so that we could go back to debating the bill that I think creates that better balance and ensures that LGBTQ students do feel accepted and don't end up with the path that so many have gone down so far. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.